Welcome back to Finnegan's Farm, welcome back to our YouTube channel and welcome back to our workshop Wednesday. My name is Paul and this is our team. Hi, I'm Sean Kyo and I'm the apprentice mechanic. Hi, I'm Mick and I'm the mechanic. Hello, I'm Marco, I love to weld. This is Bruce, this is Blake, them is two best students. Well, what's the story? I'm Kieran Ross, I'm the apprentice mechanic. Hello, I'm Carl, and I'm the one that has to make these guys look good. Don't forget to like, subscribe to the videos, and comment what you want. Just put it in the comment system. Bring it back. So, in for repair today, we have our Red Rock Agitator. We also have our Ford Ranger. We have our Lemkin Drill, and we have our John Deere 7, 8, 20. But first of all, I just wanted to mention here, the fact that during the day, we actually taken next Saturday, or not next Saturday, but Saturday, the 1st of October, in Ballyboy, Kilcarmer, County Offaly. Now, it's, it, it's a tractor dyno day with a bit of a differ and we got this in from Joe Malai here who asked would we read it out and we said certainly why not. It's for a very good cause. As you can see here, um, we have the Ballyboy Community Development and Tidy Towns supporting Down Syndrome and it's also supporting the, the Ashley Murphy Memorial Fund which we know what happened with, with poor Ashley. But, um, so if you want to test your tractor, I'll read it out. If you want to test your tractor, it'll cost you 75 euro but you need to book it online. Just go and search for Valley Boy Dino Day and you'll be directed to the link. Anyone, anyone without a tractor is very welcome and there's a host of activities and entertainment on the day. So adults five euro and kids are free. So look at great causes there for, for any of these. It's a little bit of a day for, to get your tractor out, you know, Dino there. See what horsepower it is. See if you can lose any horsepower, maybe you gain some horsepower. Some of the older tractors that say, are still well up on the house for anyway. So yeah, look at get down there to get comic there in Offaly there and support two really good funds there for uh, for Tractor Dino Day. So thanks for that job. So we'll head across to Mick and Caleb there on the 7 day twenty four hours. Right, look at that. Just <laughs> seven day twenty in here for what's that Mick? That's the pipe for Tur the turbo, turbo oil pressure supply. Yeah. As you can see, it's completely. Didn't see the engine. Yeah, stay at the it's engine there. Just knows that they are. And this is a particularly dry engine. Yeah. Seven eight twenty. Good machine. Good track actually. Be, yeah. yeah. So very, far, so good. very popular there with the lads as well. Lovely sound out of it. But uh, yeah, we can see here we have have the oil just dripping all over the engine. Now we added the pipe. Uh, where is the new pipe? There. It looks slightly shorter than. They have an issue now with this pipe because it has the fourth one that has come, I think. Um, one got lost and transported. The first one was too long, it was a bigger engine. Yeah, so that one is slightly shorter, but I do think that there was a bit of slack in this pipe anyway, so well, hopefully yeah. they'll make it really good one. Yeah, right. put it on there, let's see what happens. And is there an O ring on the top of that? There I is. have new ones on there. You have new one on it. On both. Okay. That kit there, very handy. For flat faced O rings. Imperial metric. I don't know. I don't know. You need a ladder there, Mick, do you? I'm I can get from the other side. I just get a nip on and see how. It's not bad, pal. Yeah. Yeah, it just be. Might just put a cable tie around there. Yeah, just that there, there could be a wear spot there. We'll put a cable, we'll put a cable tie around. Yeah, so hopefully that will do, will do the job. So we spotted a lad doing a bit of welding here this morning. He came over, actually, that was Marco there, but when I lifted the lid, look who it is the barrel cane I'm rustling. Trying his hand out here with stainless steel welding. Now, not simple. No, it's and not. And it's his first time trying it there. So, what's so the difference now with welding with stainless? Is there anything you need to look out for? Well, with stainless, if you were to burn it, you'll introduce iron and it, then it can corrode. So I'm not trying not to burn it. And generally, if my wild start to go grey and a real kind of a dull sort of colour, that's when it'll start to corrode down yeah. the line. So I want to see this nice little pretty colour, we know that it shouldn't corrode. So would Marco give you any tips there, or is he kind of keeping them all to himself? No, oh, Marco loves to see me struggle less than thing. It's that hitch, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, you have to lay out the hardware around here, it's not hit. That's it, exactly. So, uh, yeah, well, look, I should walk away there, we'll have a ticket. Jesus. <laughs> 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 I wouldn't mind, I was going wild there. <laughs> so, Mick's just down there, with a few buns from here. It was his birthday during the week, he kept it quiet until the son, Kevin came and told everyone, so 
He doesn't know it yet, but he's going to be getting a few cakes there and a few candles and he's saying happy birthday to him. First two buns are for John Deere. This yellow one here can be JCB Fast Track for Caleb. He'll eat that one. And Mick's favourite, the case. We'll make these two for in memory of the case tractors. And we just have a orange one we'll say for the Kubota. So Mick does love a Kubota engine, so we'll give him the orange one there. So we'll bring these down to him now. Our fella hasn't a clue. All right, Mick, come on. What are you doing there? Do what I like. They're very hard to beat. Yeah. Yeah, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. You knew, you knew about this and said nothing. <laughs> you didn't even realise the mic was on in there. But uh, anyway, Mick, we decided to uh, get you very much. a few little, you know case few little cupcakes yeah, and wish you a very happy birthday there because, you know. You're only 21 once. You're only 21 once. That's yeah. exactly it. That's yeah. a long, long time ago. <laughs> uh, look, it's great to see Mick still uh, active here with, uh, with Finnegan's fam yeah. and he's doing a great job here. Really loving the videos too, Mick, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, no, we're yeah. getting there. We're getting there now. So mm. he's uh, running there with tips and tricks. Yeah, he's very good at the tips and <laughs> tricks. The tricks and tips. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, look, it's just a quick little say a happy birthday, making. Thank you very all, much. Thanks for all the good work. Thank all you. right. Cheers, lads. Thanks. I've got a Ford Ranger in here. This is a 3.1 ton model, automatic. What's that? 152 miles on it? Yeah, so yeah, we use it here around the farm, check it off then, it was all the hair from there. But with an issue with there with this load sensing valve there, let me make you explain it. The Jeep was losing brake fluid. I assume which would be normal, it would be brake shoot, the wrist yeah. and the brake shoot, but when I checked the perfect car problem springs were replaced. Then when we went digging, this is up like this from this side of the car, and it was pissing oil out down here. So your fluid thing. was leaking down. Yeah, I've spilt a bit on that since, but the fluid was leaking down here. So we had our leak, so we had to get a new one. So we, we priced up a new and went forward in Navin and yep. it was coming in around the 480 mark. Just a uh, euro short of 500 plus that. Plus of that, yeah. So then we went digging again, you know, go on the Google there, have a look around, see what we can get. Got this part uh, in the UK for in around... 187 sterling, I think, including that. Yes, oh, including the VAT. So yeah, yeah, yeah well, definitely, yeah. You're, 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 in, you're half the price. Mm -hmm. and, and, and when you look at it? And as you can see here, it has a Mazda sticker and it says genuine parts, yeah. so someone's yeah. obviously making a killing on, on the price of parts mm. there, especially for the Fords anyway. Oh, which but is surprising because Mazda were known to be notoriously expensive, but and Ford Rouse was the cheap. Yeah, well, we, ha we have the BT25 one, that's the one you would have seen there yeah. in some of the previous videos. Now, they're fantastic cheap. These, just not so quite sure about. They're very comfortable. Well, we bought that on the, on the to, how would you say, to prove the Mazda. Yeah, yeah. The Mazda was packing you. Yeah, but on the power series. We wouldn't just, I wouldn't rate them, definitely, I wouldn't rate them as high as the Mazda. Maybe some less big to differ. If you have, throw in the comments it's below. Anyway, so we took it down and took the spare wheel down, as you can see. It's in a fair kind of a state. It was a bit of a wash down, like, wouldn't it? Yep. <laughs> Yeah, so it's fairly maggoty now, plus it's, it's flat. flat, so we'll have to get that pumped up. Now, in here is where this load sensing valve goes, and we'll get Mick to explain it here, he'll get his magic light. Well, I'll explain how it works outside, but it's up in there. And we've corrosion and that on the pipes, it just makes it dark. Really with pipes, you don't want to be going on with a spanner if you're in two or three threads. So what are you on. using? I'm trying WD-40 and everything just to soften the pipes off and rust up. Yeah, now there is a little bit, it's more so for so on that, that than anything. Yeah. That's mounts around the body. This is mounts around the axle. That pulls on that there. And as the weight increases on the back, your body versus your axle, the body lowers. That if you adjust this, it increases the pressure to the rear brakes. And then when you go light, come back up and pull on it and reduce the pressure. Yeah. Not that common to me on ABS. But if you had, we'd say, a trailer or a, or a cattle trailer on it, the more load you put down the back, the more this will allow the back brakes. And like when you look at it, it has seriously has the back brakes on it. It's unusual in the modern day, but mostly this. Yeah, so uh, yeah, that's the wrong way anyway. So we'll just get that fixed in, get it into it there. I just tighten up um, one of the pipes. It's just your fear always of cross treading when you're going on. And the pipes are just sticky as could be on the, or the nut. See you there. 
hope you get a spanner on that to get that to free, but we're working now in the moon. So after fitting our low sensing valve, we need to uh, bleed the brakes, don't we mix? Just maybe go through the procedure here. Yeah, that you, have, you have to bleed the brakes because we've let air into the system. Air compresses, brakes yeah. do, it doesn't. Unless it has water in it. And if you go above 100 degrees, water goes into steam and now your pedal will go to the floor. Yeah. This one has dual circuit brakes, one circuit on the front, one circuit on the back. If you fail, burst the hose, the pedal will feel like it went to the floor, but you will still have half the brakes that you have. And if you look at the reservoir here, because I've had the back pipe off, it's empty on the back side, whereas we have a little drop left on the front, so we will still have front brakes on it. Okay? Mm. Now we top it up, we're going to put that four into it, and yep. then we go bleed. Okay. Okay, I'll make four, uh, I'll keep an eye here on the level. That's what, that four is it? Yeah, it's that four is it. It's a higher boiling point oh, for oh, heavier oh, duty work. Oh. Yeah, but it'll, see the level coming yeah, up? Yeah, see the level coming up. Yeah, we're just still here. And she's stabilised. We bring it up a little bit a little more because you're going to bleed it. Yeah. Oh, we'll be back here once or twice. All right, bring it up at this level. One. Now we're level and across it because we're above the bridge. Oh, to keep these closed. So now we have to get back over here. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of hand pump, your foot pump. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How's the pedal going to the floor? Yeah. Well, that's quite. Oh, completely. No, it's not. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Look. No, it's not on the floor. It's still the floor. It's not. You still have foot brakes. They're arguing here already. Come on. What I'm looking at is for air. I have to clear the air there. And we're not actually not bad. See all the air there? Yeah. The, the reason we have three bleeding points is two wheels. Plus um, the low sense valve itself has a bleed on it. If it has a bleed on it, you bleed. Okay. So you would have seen uh, Hubble there with the new saw. Of course, we get the old saw back in here, and we have a bit of a repair to do to it. Now the pack of roller. Yeah, there is spots there now where it has kind of war. Uh, as we said, there's over 12,000 acres with this yeah. hara, and as you can see here, um, it's starting. The clay has kind of worked its way in and has just worn the ring, the outer ring here on the trapeze packerola. Now there is two things we can do here, either buy a new packerola or we can fix it. Yeah. And that's why Mark was here for <coughs> the job. So he's manufactured these little babies here, just out of angled steel, um, grinded yeah. them out there, cut them out of the grinder. Just and he's going to put them in here. So that, is that the, that's the, the idea, is it? Oh yeah. And it's simple and quick, you know. Just put in, weld, weld, job done. It, they're not all gone, are they? No, no, it's some spots, I don't know why. It's, you see, it's hard to say it's them big wheels. Uh, yeah, because uh, we would have had the, the, the big yeah. 900s behind it, the other thousands and 50s behind it on the tractor there, and we just don't know where. Yeah, spot, this, this spot is bad. The ends are good enough, are they? Oh yeah, ends good enough, far side as well, just in the middle. Yeah. All right, so you've no other job to do to you. Probably out sewing yourself shortly, will you? Oh. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Maybe, yeah. So oh. Marcus is going to do a bit of, bit of sewing there when he gets it all <laughs> fixed up properly. Isn't yeah. That? So yeah, as you can see, he's a good few of them done here already. Yeah. It's a little bit of time to do it, in fairness, it does mm. take time. Oh, but yeah. uh, it's the saving of the roll of the pack of roller, because if not, they just, they just no, wear away into you nothing. you see, all it's okay, just in few spots. You're going to do a bit of sweeping. Go and clean the cabs. Aye. So we got a line of the neighbours. Aja Teha, Mark. Mark Finnegan up the road there, first cousin. Uh, thanks a million, Mark, for the line of the Aja Teha. It's the red rock one, and we have one on all of ourselves, but we just haven't got it in time, so he said we'd use his there, and he did give us a lend of it. But unfortunately, as you know, when you get a lend of anything, what happens? Something breaks. Now, 
it wasn't me, it wasn't Marco, it actually was the Hubbles that broke it. Now, yeah. he tried to blame John B, per usual, but I think he has to take the rap on this one. PTO cover, I don't know, he said the screw came loose, this bit spun around. Uh, anyway, in the heel of the hunt, we ended up with cover here, which is not very, uh, can't really do anything with that. Now we have a new cover which we had one or two in stock there from the Destoners. Now they are the bare core one. Uh, that make there, if anyone wants to get them, I think you'll get them in McHugh and Cramp or any of the, the, the local dealers should have them. Now we found them a good enough uh, PTO cover, easy enough to work. They come here with a set of different colours on it. Now it can be a little bit of a minefield there when you go to uh, put these covers on. You have to get the right set in there. So, uh, or the right ring, I should say, to fit the actual collar here. So this set here, Marco, what number is that? They are all numbered. Yeah, this number, this is 368. So I think this one, what's the... So these two sizes will be yeah, the same. Yeah, 368. If you put your calipers across it here, it will probably give you a measurement there. So the one on the this side here is okay, but we just had to put a new cover on it because mm. they don't match up anyway. So we'll take yeah. that cover off, put the new cover on here. So slide that up there, we make sure that it does fit in here for a second. Yeah, make sure which way is going. Yeah, <laughs> now, there is a bit of an instruction here as well. Yeah, and I know, this should be I know it's simple as looks simple but it has to sit ni nice and yeah. tight and the idea of this is that it actually will spin the, the, or the shaft should spin you would say on the on the ring here now the cover then is the next thing that we will pop this is uh, this outside yeah outside so this, yeah, this, this looks but the view of it is, is to have a little locker mechanism on them yeah. there you go so that's the way you open it there the thing behind Good nails so the idea that then is that you can slip this off the shaft then or if you need to get in the grease the handy spicer then you can get in at it as well so here we slide it up on it there we just oh this one goes this is also okay where it should be match this okay so it's sitting in like that in like so and then we need to spin the white collar around to look. No, the white collar's in there. There we go. Now, that was our first time doing it. We probably would be better the second time around, but anyway, that's the way it goes. And as you can see here, the PTO shaft can spin and it's fully covered in. Uh, the hardy space. We'll also come to the chain and it's important to put the chain on because the chain holds the, the guard, stops the guard from spinning around so your shaft is really the only thing that should spin on the inside and uh, your safety chain is the guard from spinning. So that's really it. There's not much to it there. Um, we did find them a good uh, good system. Mm. Now there is other systems on the market there but the Barco one and I think in for around 100 euro. Now PTO covers are not cheap Sometimes you can buy a complete shaft that covers the whole lot on it, but uh, in this case here, we just we had these two spare, so we're going to put it on that and keep the neighbors happy. And what do we say about couples? Oh, this is going to be pen butter in the bog. Oh, I know you said it, Michael. Come <laughs> <laughs> go. Come on. So now it's time for tips and tricks. Tips and tricks. So, in this week's tips and tricks, we have the mighty Mick here again and he's going to explain polarity on a speaker, on a car radio speaker or whatever it is. This is a, I guess out of the 3650 or one that's connected to it anyway. Mm -hmm. But you want to explain which way the polarity yeah, should be. Yeah, yeah, very often you're changing speakers in the tractor. Yeah. But come on, and you have two words coming, you don't know which is the bus, which is the mice, right? So two words you can check with a meter, not for too long, you can get about two volts. If you're the wrong way around, you can read minus two volts. Yeah. Okay. But for the speaker, very simple test. Um, two wires connected onto it, yeah, and if so, you're the So these are either you'll always. They're have a not small, large, surprisingly enough. Yeah, we have a small and a big lug and a big lug yeah. on it here. So the idea of this train is that if your plus is yeah, if your plus wire is on your plus, if I hit this here, that cone should move forward. And as you can see, I'm the wrong way around because it's moving in. Yeah, it's moving backwards. 
And if I go that way now, that's correct. So I have plus on plus. So your plus will go on to that one there, which is plain grey. Yeah, and you've no, you're you're, you've no fear with that battery of no, no. anything. If you're the wrong way around on the tractor, on the car, you drop your speaker out for about 30% and it ruins your stereo type. Okay. Four two, now it takes two minutes. Yeah, but you know the lads around here now, they want it as loud as you can, so 30% yeah. is a lot, isn't it? Yeah, but if you're down away on one side, plus whatever it does with your stereo, it sends it here. Okay, so that's week's well, tip. Well done now. for everyone who could last week's uh, bins right to what these were, they were actually tread pitch gauges there. So well done to Blue Through 80, James Apprentice, Michael Watson, Sheehan Farr, JP, Harry, Seamus Murphy and KC. Now we had a few double comments there, I think that they were feel like gauges, which they do look like feel like gauges. And the best comment went from Owen Yohannan, who said there were feeling gauges because he fucked up the previous week there in one of uh, the comments. Uh, I think I don't know why he was looking, but he got it wrong. But uh, anyway, Owen, you fucked up again this week because uh, you still got it wrong. So it's always <laughs> next week, all right? And Mick is just going to explain there. Um, this one actually this is a metric one. one, isn't it, Chef? Yeah, for all your soul treads. That one there is, I, it's SAE, which I think is UNC, UNF. Yeah, okay. It's very, very seldom we no, use you that wouldn't, here. wouldn't really use it, but, but definitely the metric one is very, and just to differentiate then the thread sizes from, because yeah. some of them can be quite close. We have a, an, M, an M8 by 1.25, is that it, here yeah. on this one? Standard OSO is M8 by 1.25 thread. 1.25 means it, rot it travels 1.25 millimeter every rotation, every 360 degrees. And if we look there, we can check it, and it's fitting perfectly into it. Whereas if I go here at 1.5, which is for a 10 mil bolt, it doesn't fit. But if I get the 10 mil bolt, perfect. It's just in perfect. Yeah, so they're very, very handy little lockers. Only cost a couple of euro. They're not, they're not dear to buy. But yeah, just but if you're dealing with the, the American John Deere's and that, yeah. where you can have metric and imperial on it. And you start putting the wrong bolt in the wrong Yeah, we get, we, sometimes you can get a lot of crossover there with yeah. lads putting the wrong nut on the wrong bolt and then... Yeah, threads and bits then anyway. So, uh, yeah, so that's it. Well done. The mystery tool this week, I had a good look at this now and couldn't figure it out for a while. But did figure it out eventually. No, not quite. Well, give me, give me credit now, you know, give me credit. So, can we give any clues at all, Nick? Uh, no. 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 So, it's really for die hearts now, this one. As you can see, it's actually here. a brilliant little tool. Yeah, it has a, a tray here. Don't give them too much away now, so we can't give too much away. There you go. Oh, yeah. That's the <laughs> So that's it from this week's workshop Wednesday. So don't forget to like, subscribe to the videos there. It is free there, and you will get a notification on your phone when they come through. And comment what you want. Just put in the comments, and we will get back to you. So from every here, Finnegan's Farm, we talk to you all next Wednesday.